So far we have applied the least square method to solving static deterministic least square problems both well posed and ill posed. Given the importance of least squares starting from the days of Gauss, I think it is worthwhile to get a geometric view of the nature of the least square solution. Thus far we used analytical methods to derive the least square solution by formulating a problem as a minimization problem both unconstrained and constrained. This geometric view enables us to be able to look at least squares from a very simple perspective of the notion of projections. So, let us consider a vector z, z1, z2 in the two dimensional plane. This is the vector z. If you shine lights parallel to the y axis, a shadow will be cast on the x axis. This arrow segment gives you the, 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 the shadow of z. The shadow is called z1 hat. The property of this shadow in figure 1 is that it is an orthogonal projection in the sense that if I join the tip of the vector z and z1 hat the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees. On the other hand if you shine light in a direction not parallel to the y axis the shadow cast by z on the x axis is z2 hat the if I join the tip of these two vectors the angle is theta in this case theta is not equal to 90. So, this is called oblique projection. So, z1 hat is called an orthogonal projection projection of z on to the x1 axis z2 bar is the oblique projection of z on to the x1 axis oblique and orthogonal decided simply by the direction in which light is shown on the vector z. Mathematically this operation of sh um, shining light and projection can be thought of as a matrix p1 if p1 operates on z you get z1 hat the p1 has a form which is 1 0 in the first row 0 0 in the second row. So, in this case p 1 z is essentially z 1 0 the second component is annulled the first component is non 0. So, z 1 hat is equal to z 1. So, that is an orthogonal projection. On the other hand if you consider p 2 to be p 1 1 a and 0 0 and apply that operator p 2 on z you get z 1 a z 2 and the second component is 0. So, now you can see when a is 0 p 2 becomes equal to p 1 when a is not equal to 0 for example, a is greater than 0 the, the first component z 2 hat is z 1 plus a times z 2 z 1 is the first component of z say z 2 is the second component of z a is positive the, the the shadow is longer. So, you can think of projection as a geometric operation algebraically the operators matrices p 1 and p 2 essentially um, uh, generate this orthogonal and oblique projection. This is a very fundamental geometric point of view and it is a very close and intimate relation to the properties of least square solutions projection as matrix matrices 
so in the in the last slide we saw matrices p1 and p2 p1 is called an orthogonal projection matrix p2 is called the oblique projection matrix every projection matrix has a fundamental property that is idempotent by idempotency i mean p1 square is equal to p1 p2 square is equal to p2 so here i am looking for a matrix whose power is equal to itself let us recall in terms of numbers if i have a number a if I want a square to be equal to a to do that I have to solve this equation. This equation essentially tells you a times a minus 1 must be equal to 0 that essentially gives you either a is equal to 0 or a is equal to 1 only. So, there are only 2 numbers which when squared is equal to itself 0 and 1, but in the case of matrices p1 square is equal to p1 it has it can be solved and 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 the solution we saw is given by the matrix in the previous slide likewise p2 square is equal to p2 can be solved one of the solutions for that is the matrix p2 given in the previous slide what is the difference between p1 and p2 p1 is symmetric but p2 is not symmetric now I am going to state a very general property of orthogonal um, a projection matrix. An orthogonal projection matrix is idempotent and symmetric. An oblique projection matrix is idempotent but not symmetric. So every projection matrix is idempotent. It is a symmetry or not symmetric nature of the idempotent operator is going to decide whether the resulting projection is going to be an orthogonal projection or an oblique projection. It can be shown every projection matrix is singular that is it is rank deficient. If it is rank deficient the, the determinant the determinant is, is, is 0 please verify that the determinant of p1 in our earlier slide is 0 the determinant of p2 in our earlier slide is also 0. So, in this slide we are summarizing the general properties of projection matrices projections are of two types orthogonal and oblique every projection matrix must be idempotent. In addition if the projection matrix is symmetric it is orthogonal projection if it is not symmetric it corresponds to oblique projection. Now ordinary least square solutions can be viewed from an orthogonal projection point of view. Let h. So, I am considering a very special case where h is a column vector, h is a column vector that means n is equal to 1, that means n is equal to 1. That vector h is given by this line h, z is a vector in Rm. So, both h and z are vectors in Rm. I am giving an example of a two dimensional representation assuming m is equal to 2, but the whole analysis holds for any m. Let z be not equal to h therefore, if I draw the vector z this represents the vector z this represents the vector h. Now, I can project the vector z onto h to get z hat. Z hat is a vector that is along the direction of the vector h. So, I should be able to get z hat as h times x where x is a scalar. So, the question in the least square problem is such that I would like to be able to find the constant x such that the projection z hat is an orthogonal projection of z onto h that is a geometric point of view. To do that I am going to consider the difference of the vector z minus z hat and that is this vector. This vector is z minus z hat. I would like my z minus z hat to be perpendicular to z hat, but perpendicular to z hat is also equal to saying perpendicular to h. Therefore, in here I am requiring my r which is the residual. You remember the residual we talked about when we talked about least square solution z minus z hat is the residual or the error in the projection must be perpendicular or orthogonal to h. 
z hat is the orthogonal projection of z onto h. Now, I would like to relate another geometric fact. It is well known that if I have a line and if I have a point not on the line, the shortest distance from the point to the line is the length of the perpendicular from the point to the line. That is a very well known fact in basic geometry. So, you can think of the line to be my line h, you can think of my point to be the tip of um, um, a z. I am trying to draw the perpendicular from z to h the length of the. So, if it is perpendicular the angle is 90 the angle between r and h is 90 therefore, therefore r when the angle is 90 is the shortest distance the residual is of shortest length. So, the shortest distance between a line and a point not on the line is the length of the perpendicular from the point to the line. So, referring to the figure z hat the point where the perpendicular line from the point z the tip of the vector z intersects the vector h. Therefore, r g z minus z h is perpendicular to h. So, that is the simple geometric fact where the minimum of the residual essentially comes from the simple fact that the shortest distance between the line and a point uh, I am sorry the distance between the line and a point is shortest when the line is perpendicular that is the geometric fact we are trying to use. Since z hat is a vector in the direction of h since z hat is a vector in the uh, in the direction of h there is a scalar such that z hat is equal to h of x that is a very well known fact because if I give a direction any segment of the vector can be obtained by multiplying the direction by a constant. So, x is a scalar. So, by combining the fact that z minus h x is equal to z h which is perpendicular to h. Now, this perpendicular condition implies uh, uh, is, is will be implied if the inner product of the two vectors are 0. So, h is perpendicular to z minus h therefore, h transpose z minus h must be equal to 0 and that naturally leads to least square solution. So, you can multiply both sides you get h transpose h x is equal to h transpose z or x ls is equal to h transpose h inverse h transpose z h transpose z. So, z hat so, so this we have already seen to be h plus z where h plus is the generalized inverse. Now, once I know x l s I can get z hat to be h times x l s h times this is x l s I substitute that fact in here. So, I have now a matrix h times h transpose h inverse h transpose the matrix operates on z this matrix I am going to call it p of h this p of h is called the orthogonal projection matrix induced by h therefore, the least square solution z hat is equal to h times x l s is also equal to x l s is equal to h plus h therefore, h times h plus z and that is equal to p h z therefore, p h is equal to therefore, p h is equal to h h plus and that is the orthogonal projection matrix that we are interested in. So, you can readily see I get the same formula that I obtain by minimizing f of x which is the square of the norm of the residual the same result that we did analytically by minimizing f of x is obtained by a very simple geometric fact which states that the shortest the the, the 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 perpendicular from a point not on the line to the line gives the shortest distance from the point to the line. It is a very sim simple geometric fact we all learn when we are first introduced to geometry in high school. So, what is the generalization of this? Now, let us consider h is um, yes in, th in this case h is m n a matrix m rows and n columns. 
So, previous analysis was a special case when n is 1 now m is greater than n which is greater than or equal to 1 is the generalization of that let z be a vector in R m. Now, since h has n columns I am now going to consider a subspace spanned by the columns of h that is the subspace onto which I would like to be able to project my vector z that is the vector z if I project that vector z hat is given by this. So, z hat in this case is the projection it is still h times x, but in this case x is a vector belonging to R n when n is 1 x was a scalar that is what we had we had we had gotten earlier. Again z hat minus z is R the residual is z hat minus z and we would like R to be perpendicular orthogonal to the span of h. We all know span of h is the linear combinations of the columns of h that means z minus h of x must be perpendicular to every column in h. So, referring to the figure we are going to get r is equal to z minus h must be perpendicular to the columns of h. Since z hat belongs to the span of h there exists a vector x such that z hat is equal to h of x we have already talked about that earlier. So, combining this we now know r which is equal to z minus h is perpendicular to h same argument if h has only one column if we project it onto that vector if h has multiple columns we project it onto the span of h which is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of h. Therefore, we would like to enforce this condition which is h transpose z minus h must be equal to 0 that essentially gives you the normal equation which is h transpose hx equal to h transpose z this is called the normal equation. The solution to this normal equation is given by x least square is equal to h transpose um, So, the least square solution is given by uh, uh, this solution uh, yeah yes the expression given there. So, z hat is equal to h of l x so which is equal to uh, so x l less is equal to is, is given by the solution of this which is h transpose h inverse h transpose z that is the correct solution that is the least square solution that solution we have already seen in the previous module. Therefore, z hat is equal to h of l x which is again if I substitute x l s by this I get this operator operating on h that operator is called p of h. So, p of h is given by this which is h h plus that is called the orthogonal projection matrix induced by the given matrix h and please remember h plus is the generalized inverse we have already seen. So, now we are seeing very many different types of matrices that come into play we have the matrix h we have the matrix h plus which is the generalized inverse we have the matrix p h which is equal to h h plus. So, this is projection that is the generalized inverse that is the given matrix. So, all these three matrices are naturally associated with the notion of these squares. Now, I am going to talk about the general properties and verify that it is going to be an orthogonal projection much of it is going to be left as a homework problem you already know p h I am sorry you already know we already know p h equal to h h plus that is equal to h h transpose h inverse h transpose that is the p of h. Now, I would like to be um, um, ask you to verify this is item potent. So, what does it mean piece if you multiply this matrix by itself is equal to uh, 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 the matrix itself. So, p h square is equal to p h that 4 is item potent please verify this it can be also verified p h transpose is p h 
Why pH transpose is pH? Let me quickly illustrate that. pH transpose is equal to H, H transpose H inverse H transpose transpose. From matrices we already know the transpose of the product of the product of the transpose is taken in the reverse order. So, this is equal to H transpose that is equal to H transpose H inverse transpose and H transpose. Now, H, H, H transpose H is symmetric. If H, H that is a Gramian is a symmetric matrix. H, H transpose inverse is also symmetric. There is a general theorem that says that the inverse of a symmetric matrix is also symmetric. If the inverse of a symmetric matrix is symmetric, its transpose is equal to itself. Therefore, this is equal to H transpose H transpose H inverse uh, uh, I am sorry I made a mistake I, I, I would like to be able to correct myself once I have eraser mm, that is correct. So, that is the correct way of doing it. Um, so, the the transpose of the product of the product of the in, in, uh, trans, transpose is taken in the reverse order. So, H transpose transpose is H this is the transpose of the inverse this is H transpose therefore, I get the correct formula the correct formula is given by H transpose therefore, it is symmetric that is verified. So, pH is idempotent and symmetric. So, by definition is an orthogonal projection from R m to R n which is the span of H. So, please look, look at this now e, um, m is greater than n is greater than or equal to n to 1. So, R m is a larger space R n is a subspace the span of H because H is a full rank it generates the subspace R of n. You can also verify the determinant of pH is 0 and hence P n is singular it, should, it is it is singular and hence P n is singular that is the pr property we can easily verify and uh, the determinant is so means it must be singular that is that that is the way things are ok good. Now, I, I would like you to be able to verify that particular property. So, I am going to now go to the least squares with the weight present. So, in the case of weighted least squares consider z is equal to h of x consider z is equal to h of x there is a weight matrix. Therefore, I am going to be concerned with the residual z minus h of x that is the residual vector my f of x is r transpose w of x r transpose w of r that is the weighted sum of square residual. We have already seen the least square solution is given by that we have already seen the previous previous slides and previous lectures. So, z hat is h of z l s. So, this is going to be the solution least square solution I am providing a summary. So, p h w is given by the matrix that is underlined. So, p h matrix is this that can be thought of at h h plus w h h plus w is the inverse in the weighted case generalized inverse in the weighted case that is the so called projection matrix. And uh, h w w uh, h plus w is called the weighted generalized inverse. So, these are all simply a summary of all the quantities that we have considered so far. Again it is a very simple exercise to verify that this matrix is idempotent this matrix is idempotent this matrix is not symmetric and hence an idempotent matrix that is not symmetric has to be an oblique projection matrix that is the that is the uh, uh, general conclusion. What does this mean when you do problems in 3D war we always consider your weighted sum of squared errors therefore, the solution to the 3D war problems with weight matrix 
in those cases the weight matrix is simply the inverse of the covariance matrices obdurational covariance or background covariance. So, given the obdurational covariance matrix and the uh, uh, background covariance matrix so long as they are not identity matrices we are always dealing with weighted least squares with, with, within the context of 3D war. So, almost 3D war solutions are giving rise to the so called oblique projection only in the unweighted case do we have an orthogonal projection. So, that is the beautiful geometric view of things one has to remember. I am now going to quickly illustrate by an example n is 1 that means there is only one unknown m is 2 that means h is a matrix. So, now you can you can you can readily see h is a vector which is equal to h 1 h 2 that is given by here z is a vector uh, uh, because m is 2 x is a real number. I am now going to conjure up a simple matrix which is symmetric the weight matrix is always symmetric even though the weight matrix is symmetric the projection matrix resulting from the weight matrix is not symmetric that is something one needs to keep in mind. So, w 1 w 2 are 2 diagonal elements a is the off diagonal elements. So, h transpose w h if you do the multiplication you will get this quantity which is the real number. Now, we have already seen the expression for p h w in the previous slide. I am now going to substitute all this and that takes this form that that takes this form. So, if you do the simplification the projection matrix becomes um, um, that particular matrix which is a very um, each of the elements have 2 terms it is it is an addition of 2 terms. Now, I am going to set a special case h 1 is 1 h 2 is equal to 0 that means h is equal to 0 1 in this case your your projection matrix becomes the one that is given here the, R, uh, the, the, the projection z hat is given by p h w z which is given by z 1 plus a bar z 2 a bar is a by w 1 and this is something we have already seen in the very first opening example of an oblique projection. So, this so what is that we have we have we have shown if there is a weight matrix the resulting projection is not an orthogonal projection and that is the conclusion that we have. Why is this is not an orthogonal projection if you have this if this is z that is an orthogonal projection. Now, if you get this so this is z 1 this is going to be z 1 plus a times z 2 z 1 plus a times z 2 is not equal to z 1 unless a is equal to 0. So, if you assume a is not equal to 0 the angle here is 90 here is theta theta is not equal in general is not equal to 90. Therefore, when a is not equal to 0 the projection is an oblique projection that is the important thing that is an important thing that one has to keep in mind. Illustration continued. So, I am um, I have already talked about this. So, R x the error in the projection sorry R x is the error in the projection is given by z minus z hat. The actual error can be computed by this. So, this is this is the actual vector this is the projection the difference between the two is given by minus a bar 1 multiplied by z 2. So, if I consider R transpose h I get this and that is exact that is essentially given by the the um, so I, I would like you to see this. So, this is the vector h um, this is the vector h that is the vector h. So, if you project that z hat is the projection the angle is theta and that so by Schwartz inequality the inner product is equal to the norm of r x times the norm of h times cosine theta. I can compute each of these quantities explicitly this is the inner product this is the norm that is a cosine of the theta. So, cosine of theta is equal to given by this ratio and that ratio essentially tells you the angle is not 90 degrees 
theta that is theta is greater than 90 and Rx makes an obtuse angle with H see the illustration. So, when A is 0 cosine is 0 in which case theta is 90 the projection becomes orthogonal. So, this is a very simple graphical illustration using a two dimensional <coughs> case where we can readily see you can have weights, but for certain sets of weights the projection is orthogonal for certain types of weights the projection can be uh, non orthogonal projection. So, that is the important uh, uh, conclusion you coming out of this exercise. So, in summary what is that we have accomplished in this uh, small module. We have seen the importance of least square solution within the context of data simulation within the context of solving inverse problems. We are simply trying to embellish the character of the least square solution by relating the properties of the least square solution to a very simple geometric fact which we all have learnt in our first course in geometry that of orthogonal projection and oblique projections. So, what is the conclusion? If you have a static deterministic inverse problem and you formulate it as a unweighted problem the least square solution is given by orthogonal projection. If you formulate it as a weighted least squares the solution is given by an oblique projection. This, this essential difference between orthogonal and oblique is essentially coming out of whether there is weight whether there is not weight. Recall the formula so I, I have a couple of exercises recall the formula that we have already seen. So, I would like you to be able to plot the value of theta as a bar ranges in the interval minus 1 to plus 1. So, this exercise essentially tells you how the angle theta varies with with the choice of a bar and please recall from couple of slides earlier a bar depends on a. So, a essentially controls a bar and as a bar ranges within minus 1 to plus 1 theta sweeps through a particular range and I would like you to be able to plot this perhaps using Mat MATLAB and, and, and convince yourself what is the range of rotation angle theta one gets with A. The second exercise relates to the expression for the weighted generalized inverse check if it satisfies. So, what is the idea here? Now, any generalized inverse must be able to satisfy the moore penrose condition in, in module relating to matrices. So, here is an exercise that I would like to revisit the moore penrose condition that defines the generalized inverse and check to see whether this expression for the generalized inverse with the mate with, with, with the weight satisfies the moore penrose inverse. I think it will be a very worthwhile um, exercise to do. With this we come to the end of the discussion relating to the geometric facts on geometric interpretations of least square solutions. Thank you.